All right. So as has been pointed out, uh, as we got into Django, we uh, test driven development and kind of fall by the wayside. And in the wild, this won't be the case. Test driven development does remain relevant at every level that you'll be, you'll, uh, that you'll be working in. So Django does have built-in means to test your software. It's a little bit different, but also not that different from vanilla Python, as we'll see. And in the future, as we move in, to learn more coding languages, more, uh, more frameworks. There are many, many different software testing suites out there. And you'll be, and some of them are good for some things, some of them not so good for other things. But I just wanted to show you that A, unit testing is not only possible with Django, it is actually pretty simple. And just give you an idea of what you may be doing as you move forward. Because when you do your uh, personal and group projects, we are going to be expecting testing at every level. So it's good to see this now. So I'm going to quickly I'm going to start a project. So I'm going to call this one Zookeeper. I'm going to make a vertical environment. Oh, I, know. I have a quick question from Get to you. Yeah. Uh, so I know, like, beginning of the week, we when we were doing the login with the authenticated user, we mm -hmm. had our template same level as our project, and then. Now we're kind of switching back to all our templates within the app. Is there, uh, like, how do I know what to do? So, generally speaking, with Django, your templates involving like login and authentication will live at the project level. But anything involving specifically in a, a specific app will live at the app level. So, the idea is that the login stuff is relevant for the entire project. but you know, anything involved with one aspect of it will look at the app level. Okay, because I think we've only done either or. We haven't actually incorporated like having an app with its own templates or having the templates on the project level. Okay, good point. Let's start my virtual environment. Excellent. And then I'm going to start a new app. I'm going to call this one Animal Habitats. And it's going to be keeping track of our animals and the habitats they live in. You can start me up. Oh, thank you. We're going to install Django. There we go. Oh, start app. There we go. I'm just going to be kind of zooming through some of this because we've done it all of before. I hate when it doesn't automatically. Let's see any rivalries between when it does it doesn't. OK, so I'm going to quickly make some models for my uh, animal habitats. I'm going to have one class called Habitat. That's going to have a name. I'm going to give it a max and a max occupancy. I'm going to make another class called animal. I'm going to give it a name. I'm 
I'm going to give it a species. And an age. And lastly, I want to make sure that I set up a relationship so that their one habitat has many animals in it. So I'm going to create a foreign key in the animals. I'm going to say habitat equals models of foreign key. Goes to habitat on the lead equals models of cascade. And related to name going to be animals. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give habitat a instance method just so we can kind of see how that works. So I'm going to make give habitat a method to calculate the average age of all the animals that it has. And this is something we, in the wild, we wouldn't really necessarily need an instance method for this, but again, this is just kind of a example. So I'll call it AVG animal age. I want to remember how to get, uh, like using the ORM, how to get the average of something based on average of a related field based on this. Let's take it step by step. First off, how do I get from a habitat to its animals? A relation. A relation? Oh, uh, related name. Yeah, and how does that, what does that look like here? Line nine. Don't you have to specify the uh, foreign key first? So I did that in the animal. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. And I set up the related name equals animals. Habitat? Well, okay, so remember, in the, we have our instance method here. I know it's been a while since we kind of focused on our OP. It takes self as an argument. What does self refer to in this particular case? Habitat. So it is self.object. So that would return all of the habitats, but we want all of a particular habitat animals. Self. Self.animals. Yes, self dot animals. Okay. Because related name here, we'll set it up so that this uh, class will have something called animals. And then there's a method that this has called aggregate which allows you to take, uh, use some built-in uh, methods from uh, Django ORM and create a full answer for it. So in this case, I want models.abg. I want this by average age, so I'll do age. It's going to go through all of the animals that have this, the four key for this habitat, and then get calculate their average of their ages. Any questions about that? Uh, maybe like on uh, can you show how to like do that in reverse? Uh, say you have a list of animals, how can you use the foreign key to go back to the habitat for that animal? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so if I wanted to say like, well, in this case, I would just have to, if I have an ant, let's, I'm gonna do an example here. Have So that's just an, an animal object. To get from there to its habitat, we just need to write a dot habitat. Oh. That's what this work <laughs> does. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this, this line set make once this line is written, it makes it pretty easy to get from one to the other. It says animal has a habitat, and a habitat has animals. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good that you're asking these questions. All right, now I'm going to make some migrations. Make migrations for animal habitats. Oh, I'm still late. Yeah. Did I do it wrong? Did it you're right, I didn't. 
Thank you for pointing that out. I completely forgot. <laughs> There we go. And then I can Python manage.py migrate. That all looks good. So now we have our model set up. Everything should be working on that front. And now we can actually start trying to write some tests. And if you look, maybe you've noticed this in the past, when you generate an app with Django, it gives us a few things, admin.py, apps, models, and tests.py. And up here I get from Django.test import test case. So that should look pretty familiar because unit test also used something called test case when we were using unit test. So Django.test is a library that works almost identically to unit test. Uh, most of the syntax is nearly identical. So quick refresher on how to write those tests. So we set up a class. I'm going to call it habitat test case. And it inherits from the test case model. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a method called setup. And setup is going to take self as an argument. And remember, setup in unit test is always code that runs before each test it actually gets run. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some objects to actually do my tests on. I'm going to do habitat, I'm going to equal habitat.objects.create. So essentially creating that object and saving to the database in one step. Name equals penguin house. Max occupancy equals 75 or 70. Why not? They can say habitat uh, animals dot create name equals rocky species equals emperor penguin and age equals five. Let's create a couple more. I'm just going to copy this line. It's a Harris, it's a rock hopper penguin, and he is nine years old, and Leona is an Dewey penguin who is six years old. And I'm going to write a quick test to test out to see if that average age function works the way we expect it to. I'm going to test AVG age. We say habitat equal habitat dot objects dot first. I'm going to say self dot assert equal. Habitat.avg animal age. And I'm expecting it to be nine. So to run this testing, we just need to do Python manage.py test. Uh oh. All right, so we had some errors. But let's take a look at the entire thing before we kind of debug this. So we have this line right here. Creating test database for aliens. And then down here, destroying test to database for alias default. So one of the cool things that uh, Django's test suite does is it actually allows us to, it creates a database specifically for testing that it then, des then destroys at the end. So this setup thing here saves all of these objects to our test database without affecting the data in our production database. So this is something that Django does for us for free. Not every testing suite out there for every framework will do this. So it's important to keep that in mind when you can be moved into other frameworks. But with Django test case, it'll just say, OK, we're creating the database. Everything you do here will have no effect on anything else. 
but we still didn't work because habitat is not defined. Does anyone notice what I did wrong here? You did import it. Yeah. I need to import it. So I need to go from dot model import habitat. So you clear this and try again. All right, we had a failure instead of an error. That's a good thing. And as you can see here, self dot assert equal assertion error. So this is what they gave. This is what the thing gave us. Oh. Age underscore underscore APG 9.0. So it did work. It just didn't work giving me the data that I expected. So let's amend this so that it actually formatted the right way. I'm gonna run this again. All right, all the tests, the tests pass. So is this all looking kind of familiar now? What questions do you have about testing so far? So when we're testing, mm -hmm. do we need to test the models? Or do we need to test like the, the method that we define? Because like we don't really want to test the models or the forms because they're kind of built-in methods that are more or less reliable, right? Excellent point, yes. So in general, you don't need to spend that much time testing your models if you were just using the standard built-in Django stuff. Like even this method I used here, the uh, average animal age, all this did is use a built-in Django method that we know works. So in the real in the real in real life, there really wouldn't be much point to making a test for this particular thing. Testing for our controllers then? Yeah. So one thing, yeah, is we do test our controller to make sure that everything is working well the right way there. Because I want to say, all right, this is the important bit. If I can, you know, if I visit my list of habitats, I want to know that the habitat that is that I the habitat that I created is in that list, for example, right? So let's do that. So I'm going to quickly kind of zoom through everything else and try to get the, you know, get, uh, get a basic version, uh, basic index up and running. So we go to URLs. Make sure we have a path to habitats here. Animal habitats.urls. Now we need to make a U now we need to make one a foil for that. Touch animal habitats urls.py. From Django.urls, we need to import path. We also need to import the views. Set up the URL patterns array. Get a path that are just our basic page without any URI attached to it. It's going to be use.habitat list. And the name will be habitat list. Let me know if I'm going too fast here. I just didn't want to spend too much time retreading old ground. But if and if at any point I do something that goes doesn't make sense, please just point it out. Good question. On line two, it does say from dot. Do you just say import view instead? You can try. No? If it breaks later, we'll know why. All right, so we said that views has something called habitat list. So we need to make that. Which means we're, so. We're going to take quest as an argument. We're also going to need our models. So from the model, import habitat. We're going to say habitats. It's going to equal habitat.objects.all. And then we need to render something. We're going to say return render request. And that's going to go to habitats 
slash habitat list that HTML in something we haven't created yet. And the data we're going to give it is habitats. habitats. Now we need to make a templates folder and a habitat fo habitats folder inside of that. I'm going to make habitat list.html. I'm just going to quickly copy some very, very basic code that should show all the habitats in a list. So we got a list of habitats, four habitat and habitats. We have links, both saying showing the habitat name. And for we don't have a link to anything yet, we don't have detailed locations. Any questions on how we got from the model all the way here? You know, there's a whole lot of stuff, but it's all stuff we've done before. Okay, so generally at this point is when I would boot up my server to make sure it was all running. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just check, I'm only going to check it via my tests. If the tests work, great. If not, oh well. So, Back at tests here, <clears throat> I'm going to have to do, uh, add something that wasn't there before. <coughs> so Django.test has a class called client. And the client's job is to mimic the behavior of a user when it comes to navigating pages. So the client is capable of making get requests and post requests. I'm going to make a new thing right here. I'm going to call this test habitat list. I'm going to say client is going to equal a client object. And for now, I'm just going to say response equals client.get. And the, it needs a URI here, so I'm going to tell it to go to slash habitats. And then I just want to print the response curve. I want to see what that what that actually is. <coughs> so I'm going to clear this. Get out of there. Thank you. Test. Okay. Well, okay, we know what happened with the <laughs> module. No module named you. So we do need to do from dot model from dot import views. Okay, now we know what now we know that we do this for a reason. Hard testing. Yep. So run again. Here it is. So we have an HTTP response permanent redirect status code 301 text HTML char set URL equals habitats. So interesting is that that's not the URL I put earlier. I want to try something real quick. I know in the official documentation, it's, it, it, they describe it as this with a slash. Because ideally, does anyone remember what a status code 301 does? Redirect? Yeah, status code 301 means it redirected. We're looking for a status code of 200, which means that it all went out the way we wanted it to. So there we go. So in this case, we got a status code of 200, <coughs> text HTML here, and car set UTF-8. Right, what did you change for it to? So I added a slash at the end of this. OK. So essentially what I was saying is if I visited localhost 3000 slash habitat without the slash, I would actually get redirected to localhost 3000 slash habitat slash. OK. So. The response allows us to, so the response includes all of the HTML that gets rendered. So there's a few ways we can test this. One of them is there is a method called assert contains. And 
and we can actually read the description here, assert that a response indicates that some content was retrieved successfully, i.e. the HTTP status code was inspected and that text occurs count times in the count content of the response. If count is none, then the count, count doesn't matter, the assertion is true. So what I want to check is, all right, in our list, we should see the habitat that we created during our setup page, right? Specifically, its name. Also, I realized I called this name, not habitat name. Oops. I should have let that test fail. Oh, well. So I want to say a certain thing. I want to say that the response should contain Penguin House. So the test ran okay. I'm actually going to put this back to the way it was to see what it looks like if the test fails. All right, we had a failure. False is not true. Couldn't find Penguin House in response. Because I gave it habitat.habitat habitat name instead of habitat.name, which is what I put it in my model. So in that case, it's just checking for matching string. Yep. It's looking to see if this string is inside the HTML response. This is very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, simple, right? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to do one more thing with this. I want to make sure that we can actually successfully post data. So I'm actually going to do uh, add like a little extra thing that I've been needing to do as well. Is I would like to show you like I know we've been using you know the Django's magical form class stuff, which is cool. But I would like to show you how you could make it without it, just so you can kind of see what's going on under the hood again. But after this, you'll probably see why we use the class. It is actually a lot easier. So I'm going to go to my URLs, make a path to slash new. It'll be just new. No slash new. Oh, great. I'm going to go to views.newhabitat. Name is going to equal new habitat. So the way this is going to work is it's going to, some of this will look pretty similar. So I'm going to hit one. So I'm going to say if request dot method equal equals post. Then I'm going to say data and equal request dot post. I'm actually just going to print out the data here for now. Let's so see what we can see what that looks like. I'm going to say else. I want to return render. That's how you spell return. Return render request. Going to habitats slash habitat form dot html. We don't have a form here, so we're not going to add add a form to it. I'm going to make a Habitat form.html. So to make this without the form helper, it needs form. Wait a second. <laughs> there we go. The action is going to be using this. I'm going to use kind of just like a URL or a link. I'll say URL that goes to new habitat. I'm also going to say method. It's going to be full post. Quotes on your habitat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We need to add that CSRF token. Oops. 
token is a security thing, right? Yes. Okay. And the reason we have that CSRF token there is that we can't just have someone go into the inspector and change a form on another website to interact with our website somehow. Because they don't have access to that token. Cross site request for tree. Yep. All right, so I'm going to have, so I think I remember our habitat just had two things. It had a name and it had a max occupancy. So I'm going to put, say, input type equals text. I'm going to say name, which is going to equal name in this case. Another input and that type is going to equal number. And the name is going to equal max occupancy. And I'll give it input type of submit. So I'm going to boot up the server. Take a look at this. Uh oh, what has this? Oh, okay, the slash is unnecessary. All right, so I can get rid of that real quick. There we go. Let me go to local post 8000 slash habitat slash new. So very, very basic form that we've created. You have a number thing right here. And if we inspect the whole thing real quick. So we have yeah, this is all set up exactly the way we put it. So, anyone see? Okay, so it's, it's not that hard, right? Does anyone see uh, maybe why we have a, there's an advantage to using the, the form the way that they do it in the that we've been doing it? Anything to source stuff. Thing. And right now it's not very secure, but the main thing I'm noticing is that we can't really just remake this for an edit request the same way that the <coughs> form can. We have to write an entirely new form specifically for updating. Which it's not again for this in this case it's not super difficult, but it's more difficult the more complex the form to get. But in any case, I'm gonna say all right. Let's call this Tiger Den. Hit submit. Yes, yeah, so we got none, but if we look up here. Here is our response uh, dot post. Or was it request? Yeah, request our request dot post here. So it gives us our token. It gives us a name and it gives us the occupancy. So we have it. So that's how it gives us the data. It sends a post and it gives us all of the data that comes from the form. What's the value error again from the bottom? Uh, so essentially, this view, it printed data and it didn't return an HTTP response. It just returned none. So it's just saying it got here and then didn't know what else to do because it just got to a print statement. Oh, because like with the return data, then <laughs> yeah. So you get, you're not supposed to do that. So let's actually make this something that actually works. So I'm going to say, I'm going to make a new habitat, and it's going to equal a habitat. And the name is going to equal data habitat, or the name. And the max occupancy. If you notice here, it's, where'd it go? It's a string, and what we need is an integer. We're going to set that equal to int data max occupancy. Then we can say habitat.save. And then when you successfully do something, you're supposed to redirect. So I'm going to import redirect here. And I'm going to return. Redirect 
in this case, I'm just going to take it back to the habitat list, so I don't have to make a view, uh, a detailed view for now. Habitat list, not view. So, there's my tiger den. It doesn't go anywhere. So, we have a basic form now. And again, at the moment, it's not that much more complex to make your own forms from scratch instead of using the uh, Django's imported, uh, you know, uh, form classes. But we're going to get into you'll see much more complex forms involving a lot more data that may need to be reused more often. So even though it's, you don't have as much control over it as you do with writing your own from scratch, you also, it also saves you a lot of work. Uh, any questions about making your own form from scratch before we go back into testing? So in that case, we've got everything we need to do that. I'm actually going to get the server, go back to my test uh, test suite, find it, get out of here. What did I just do? OK. What's that? OK. Get out of here. So again, the client. In addition to making tests and uh, make, making get requests, you can also make post requests. So I should be able to say test new habitat. Client is going to equal client. And in this case, I need to post something, right? So I can client.post. And just like last time, I'm going to give it the URI, which is in this case, slash habitats, slash new. So it's not actually testing our form. It's just testing our controller. So it needs data for this post request. We can just give the data just like this. So name is going to be Tiger Den. Next. Occupancy is going to be 12. All right, so if this post works, how, are we going to, how would we know that our post request was successful? What's one way of checking, okay, we have successfully posted some data? You got it 200? So, oh, you have to check it on the server side, right? Yeah, so we wanted to. We, we would, if this worked, our database should have been updated, right? right? So we could do it like this. Self dot assert equal. We want to check habitat dot objects dot all. We want the second one, so the place in one. Because there's already one thing for it to save to our database, so there should be a second one. We can check its name. Should be Tiger Den. Python manage.py test. Uh oh. Calling didn't work. Yeah, this is the next out of range. <laughs> next out of range. So that like what that tells me is that maybe it didn't work because there should be two things in the database right now. The one that we created during our setup and this new one here. So I could, you know, print. Yeah, do uh, habitat.objects.all just to check. You show one object, and that object has an ID of one. 
which is unexpected. It shouldn't have an ID of zero, I'd say. All right, that doesn't tell us anything. That's why you get that string method. Penguin House. Okay, so it didn't, it looks like it didn't save to our database. So now the question is, why? So, go to our views. Request that method should be post. Data equals request.post. Create a habitat should save the habitat and then redirect. So I'm actually going to print out something else. I'm going to save this to or as as response again. And then if we print out response dot status code, I think. We'll see what kind of error we're doing. Yeah. Let's see if that works. Is it because we're passing in max occupancy as an integer? It's possible. OK, but first off, response doesn't have something called status. So I'm just going to print off the response as, well, as it is right now. Yep, we got a status code 404. So that means some we, we've already checked by ourselves that our post request should work. So in this case, something's wrong with how we did this. We can I'm actually going to try something. This, this is how I did it four minutes the first time I did it. All right, so in that case, we still got a 404. All right, so maybe it's not our URI. URI. So we can check to see if it's a problem with the status passing in a integer instead of a string. All right, still get the same problem, still getting a status code of 404. Should make yeah, we'll sure. check our URLs. Yeah, check our URLs. And also check our server. That should still be working, but you never know. So it's working on that end. Okay. So something about the way we're processing the request is wrong. Is this something up with our well no, because the form shouldn't matter if we're just doing a direct post request. Could be. Okay. So was the slash. Oh, it could be nothing ready to come after. It could be the slash. I want to change one more thing because it just occurred to me. Yeah, but that's the reason. Yep. Yeah, but even then, it's, I mean, it's redirected to the right place, but it's still doing the 302. Yeah. So in this case, the 302 is actually what we expect. Because in our views, we return oh, redirect. That's the redirect. Yeah. So this is returns the 302 stats. Okay. I'm going to try one more thing that just occurred to me. So see if it makes a difference. I'm going to deactivate the server and run the test again. Okay. Cool. So it was that slash in that case. Hmm. Interesting that it needed the so I continue there, but there you don't need the slash. Hmm. All right. Oh, is it probably because you've got the extra the URL file for? Habitats, it knows there's more stuff coming after it. Yeah, you're probably you right. The extra file, mm -hmm. whereas there's nothing set up to know there's anything coming after new. Like if we put in a new URL for like new slash something, not like we would, but try to see slash would be fun. Yep, I think you're right there. So it's going to slash habitat slash because that's just like okay, it's explicitly that explicitly says there's no further things in the URI after the habitats. 
But in this case, new is just an endpoint. There's nothing that can come after new. So didn't know what to do with that. Interesting. So slash habitat slash new gets us to post the data. And we can see that the last thing, that, the second thing in objects.all is tiger data. So you'll notice, well, any, first off, any questions about how we checked our post data? It all seems pretty straightforward. So you'll notice that even though we can test what's our HTML response using the self assert contains here, that isn't the same thing as checking what actually shows up on the page. Uh, Django, kind of uh, this particular testing suite doesn't necessarily check what's on the, what actually gets sent to the page, what actually shows up on the page and doesn't do anything about DOM events, things you do with JavaScript. I believe that Django does actually have like a testing, like have an additional testing suite that, does, <coughs> that kind of incorporates some like JavaScript DOM, DOM manipulation into it so that you can actually check these things. But in general, especially as we get move forward into React, you'll have Django testing itself for the model and the controller. And then you'll have some sort of React framework way of testing, OK, is everything working the way it should do once it gets to the front end? OK. In that case, uh, that is our only planned, planned lecture for today. Uh, has anyone thought of any other topics they'd like to cover to cover for today before we move into JavaScript? Just a quick question about the included database versus setting up Postgres. Um, just like going forward, like what the difference is, or if we always want to create our own database in Postgres and just, just high level. Yeah. yeah. So for a lot of the lectures, I've been using the built-in SQLite database. And the reason I've been doing that is it's less work. <laughs> uh, it's simple to it, it's simple to don't need to do any additional setup, and it's very lightweight because it's literally just a document that lives in your file path. We could probably find it, but we can't look at it. Yeah, there it is right here. db.sqlite3. That's our database. That's all. So when you're actually making project, you're going to want to set up a Postgres SQL database. So, because that is, again, that's more powerful and more professional. Uh, but if you're just practicing something, using SQLite 3 is fine. Uh, so, if we did the whole process in SQLite, we just need to re migrate, right? And just be fine. If we want to go back, to, let's say, change the database to SQLite before. Yeah, I think there shouldn't be an issue if you do that, as long as, long as you go to the settings and make sure you're going to a Postgres SQL database. I don't personally. Could you walk through that? Because I actually did have, uh, I think I was doing that issue. Yeah. Oh, you changed the I was, yeah, I think I started off as SQLite and then I changed it to Postgres and then I was creating a database and then creating a SQLite database. Interesting. So I was missing a step somewhere, but I didn't know. Okay. Well, we can try that. So, create DB. I mean, yeah. Zoo. Yeah. So, now you SQL Zoo. Okay, it works. That means we set up our Postgres database. Now, I believe in set, we need to find the settings for our project. And then, it should be under databases. Instead of back in SQLite 3, it should be Postgres SQL. Get rid of all of this, so just as zoo. No. Yes? I think you also need the type of Yeah, Psychop G. Yeah, we'll, um, that will have to do. I'm also going to need Psychop G. Thank you. Psychop G. Psycho. That's what I said. Reverse Psycho G. Yep, so I'm going to pip install. So I'm going to take a look real quick at the migrations that we already have. 
because this is where this is how we connect our models to our database. So if there's anything in here that's already set up to connect to connect to that. All right, so we have Django.db.models here. What about the in it? Nothing's in there. So I'm going to first I'm actually going to try to I'm just going to try to migrate again. See what happens. Hmm. All right, it all looks okay so far. So if I start the server, nothing with the models change. So. Yeah. So now I should be able to go to my server, and I shouldn't see the thing that we already created earlier because. That was yeah, that was a different database. database. Nice. And if I just do <laughs> Penguin House. There it is. Yeah, so it looks like it's just that simple. Um, so if you, if you created something with SQLite, you just need to make sure that you, up, you create a Postgres database and update your databases. I don't even know if running the migration again was necessary, but I think it was. I think so, because you'd have to put that into the data. That's the only way those models go into the database. Yeah. So, yeah, just update your settings.py and migrate, and you should be fine. All right, so let's. All right, so I'll tell you what. So, we're going to stop this recording here and Take a break, and I don't know if we're gonna like. I don't even know if we actually have to come back. You can go. Uh, you can also work on. I think the next challenge is meetup. But Slack me if you have any ideas for things that you would like to, or Slack it on the Kilo channel if you have any topics that you really want to cover this afternoon. And then we'll set up some time this after lunch to cover any of those if any of them show, show up. Sound good? Okay. I actually really like that three o'clock 